the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. All right, welcome to our new place. I gotta admit, this is kind of nice, all right? Getting to pray in the center for a change is great. But um, it's exciting to be here in our first liturgy, and it's also especially exciting because um, we get to pray our first liturgy here on the Feast of Pentecost. And before we get into, I just want to share a little bit about today. Um, but before we get into uh, what I want to share, what do we do different today? What was, the, what was the change? Before we just kind of skip over it, let's talk about what we did differently today. Okay, so there's a special hymn for the Pentecost. In Coptic, it's Pia Pnema, but we refer to it as Descent of the Spirit. It's also a hymn that we would say during the wedding. Um, that's the hymn that we say, uh, that we pray that the Holy Spirit would come down and unify the two to become one. So that, that was a special hymn for today. That's the main hymn for today. What was the other thing that we did that was really strange? Or different? Yeah, so we read. What, what, what did we read? So we read, I know the deacons or the shouldn't, all right? All right, so we read the Igbe. What part of the Igbe? Igbe is a big book. There's a couple hours. Third hour. Third hour. Okay, good. We read the third hour. So what part of the third hour did we read? <laughs> Gosh, I'm going to just get to the sermon. All right, no. Come on, let's figure out our faith. All right? We read, we read the gospel when? We read the gospel at its normal time, which was after man's before offertory. Okay, we read the third hour of gospel. What are the two hours that we normally read during matins? The third, third and? Six. Third and six. So we read the third hour of gospel, okay? And then we skip the rest because there's a lot of other rites, and so we needed to shorten up time, so we skipped everything from the third hour and the sixth hour, right? Absolutely not, okay? We didn't just skip things in order to save time. We skipped the third hour litanies, okay? And this, all the six hour readings, because today we focus on what? The, the Holy Spirit, the descent of the Holy Spirit. The third hour of the Igbeya focuses, all the prayers are focused and surrounded on the third hour of, of the descent of the Holy Spirit. So today, we're having a prolonged third hour. So we read the gospel um, of the third hour in Beta, which was also the gospel of Matins. And then we skipped, we went into the liturgy of the word. And then after the Acts, the book of Acts, we read the third hour litanies, which are the prayers that come right after the gospel. Okay? What tune did we sing of it? Where did we hear that tune before? Holy Week, Good Friday. It's the same tune that we pray when we uh, sing the litanies of the sixth hour. Okay, the litanies of the sixth hour on Good Friday, it's the same tune. That's the same tune. So if it sounded familiar but you couldn't quite pick out where it's from, it's from Good Friday. Okay? The way I like to, to you know, when I think, and, and this is just my own personal, like, how I reconcile things, but when I was like, okay, Good Friday is kind of a sad day and today's a joyful day. Like, how do we reconcile the two? You know, why do we use a, a hymn that has a sad sort of tone to it on a day that's joyful? The way I think about it is that while Good Friday, Great Friday is a sad day, it's a day of power. It's a day of, of hope. And, and today's a continuation of that day. And so that's the way I think about it. That's my own personal, it's nothing written in books or anything like that. So anyway, um, so... That's what's special about today, is we really focus on the coming of the Holy Spirit. Um, because the Holy Spirit, when it comes, it comes to provide us so many things. And one of the things that the Holy Spirit really provides us with is comfort, which is the other name of the Holy Spirit. We, we often refer to it as the Spirit of Comfort. But comfort to different people, like comfort can take on different meanings to different people, okay? Some people can see comfort as like a tub of ice cream, all right? That's comfort. Some people see comfort as I'm going to watch reruns all night long. Some people see Netflix as comfort. Some people, like, say, taking a walk in, 
nature is comforting to me. Everybody has a different definition, not necessarily a definition, but a different uh, perception of what it, what brings them comfort. Okay, but of all things that give us comfort, there's one thing that I think is very universal among humans. Okay, there's one thing that I think that is very universal among humans that really gives us comfort, and that's when we're listening. Think of when you're having a conversation with somebody and you're really pouring out something that was really heavy on your heart. And you felt that the person was not interrupting you, they weren't trying to fix your problems, but they just listened. I heard you. They responded. They looked you in the eye. They weren't playing on their phones. They weren't multitasking. They were listening. I can't tell you what you felt, but I'm sure to some extent, like we felt understood. We felt loved. Now, now while that's, it's easy to highlight like a great model to listen, but the truth is like we live in a world where there's very, very little listening. And I want to bring an extreme circumstance to show what the consequences can be and have been to some people who were never listened to. So in San Francisco, they did a study of teenagers who turned to prostitution. And they asked the teenagers who turned to prostitution, they said, if you felt that there was one thing that could have been done for you, that would have saved you from this road, what would it have been? And they said that all of them, all the people, all, all the, uh, the ones in the study, in different ways, all went silent. And they described it as like sadness just came over them and tears started to flow. And they all in different words said, if somebody would have just listened to me. Somebody would have just listened to me. I wouldn't have ran off. I wouldn't have done what I did. When we're not listening to, it in a way like paralyzes us. It paralyzes us from moving forward in this world. To walking the steps that God has called us to. And in the days of ascension to the Pentecost, I would say that the disciples and the close followers of Jesus fell into this period of time of 10 days where they were paralyzed, afraid of walking in the way that God had called them to walk. You're saying, how, how does this link up with listening? Well, Jesus kept on saying to them, I'm going away and I'm going to send the comfort. What was their response? No, don't go. No, don't go. Just stay here. Stay here. So to an extent, like, Jesus knew what was best for them, but he wasn't really listening to them. He's like, no, I have to go. It's going to be better for them. But from the perspective of the disciples, Jesus wasn't listening. He wasn't listening to what they were asking. Even leading up to the crucifixion, when they're saying, Jesus, don't go to Jerusalem, you're going to die. He's like, no, I have to go. So the disciples can perceive that Jesus wasn't listening. And what Jesus did when he died, and then also when he ascended, disciples displayed similar behaviors. They climbed down. They went into hiding. They became paralyzed because they felt they weren't being listened to. Or an aspect of it. I'm not saying it's the only reason, but an aspect to why they probably went for shelter was probably because they felt like Jesus wasn't listening. We told him to stay, and he left twice. Being listened to is something 
that shows us we're loved. No one, no one more than God knew how important listening was. And if we look at God, and we'll look at Him in three different pains. First pain, if we look at the Old Testament, we see the interaction between the Israelites and God. When the Israelites would get themselves into trouble, and then they would cry, God would listen, and then He would send deliverance. Israelites would then feel we are protected by God, we are heard by God. Then as we kind of move forward and we see that humanity itself because of the sin that had come into the world was going in a one way path in the wrong direction. God again heard the cry of humanity. And how did he listen? By sending his son. To get first hand knowledge of what it was to be in our shoes. He listened to our cry and he responded. And now after his ascension, God continues to listen. But he's chosen to do, do to listen through the sending of the Holy Spirit. Who unlike, who in contrast to, we see God in the Old Testament, God the in the Old Testament, we see Jesus in the New Testament, now we see Holy, the Holy Spirit, like, He has chosen to listen by dwelling inside. Which is the best kind of listening there can ever be. From the inside. When you're trying to convey a message to somebody and you really want them to hear you, what are you trying to do? You're trying to bring what's inside out. So that they can understand you. They can see eye to eye. They can partake of whatever you're partaking of. It's important for us to bring our insides out. And it's when we do that and the other person responds and reciprocates what we're saying that we feel we're being listened to, that we're being understood. They say actually that listening is so close to loving that most people don't know the difference. That if you really listen to somebody, that if you really listen closely to somebody, you're essentially loving them. And if you look at yourself, and you go back to a time where you felt that somebody really, really listened to you, that's the person you want to go back to. Why? Because, in essence, they've shown you love. And now with the Spirit dwelling inside of us, we have an avenue to be listened to, with an avenue to be heard. And not heard superficially, but heard with full concentration. Because he is God, he sees our thoughts, he feels our emotions. He knows what we're going through, he experiences what we go through. And so, he listens to us, and he responds. When we choose to listen to someone, we do a couple of things. We validate what they're going through. We validate what they're going through. And so, if you think to a time where you have maybe been like very anxious, hurt, upset, sad, angry, fearful, rejected, whatever it is, if you think to a time where you were able to share that with somebody, and they listen, intent to, like listen to you attentively, and and they kind of give you that like it's okay, you're not crazy, sort of feeling. That's validating something. So when we listen, and when God listens to us, one we are validated, and two we can also give validation. And what the person is going through is important and is different. The other thing, and I, and I said it before, that when we listen closely to somebody, we essentially are loving. It's a way to love. 
And lastly, what we do when we really listen to someone is we're able to encourage them. We're able to encourage them. Encourage them appropriately. Okay? And what do I mean by that? There have been times when you may have been like talking, talking to somebody who is not necessarily there. Okay? They're, they're there in the room, but they're doing something else. And they're kind of one ear with you and one ear doing something else. And all of a sudden you get to a point in your sharing where you're kind of expecting a response. It's like, no response. Or the response is, yeah, 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 I think you should go do that. And you're sitting to yourself like, do what? I wasn't asking you for something to do. Like, that person thinks they're participating in the conversation, but they're not. They kind of, they missed the boat of being able to encourage the person who is now pouring out their heart. So when we listen attentively to somebody, we validate them, we show them love, and we encourage them. Because by listening, we're able to be attuned to what it is they need, what it is they're sharing, and to, when appropriate, offer up the right thing to say. Now, yeah, 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 I think you should do that. And when the Spirit came down to dwell inside of us, I think He does these three things to us. He validates us because He listens to us. He loves us and He encourages us. And when we look at the disciples, when the Spirit came down, validated that they were afraid without being the Lord. Listened to them. The coming of the Holy Spirit was proof that God was listening because He listened to their fear and He sent the comfort. Okay? And then, the disciples who were called to do great things, just as all of us are called to do great things, needed the encouragement to go and do them. And so the coming of the Spirit dwelling inside of them provided the encouragement to go and do what they did on the day of Pentecost, which was to preach. We live in a world where people are walking around wanting to be listened to, wanting to be heard. When somebody goes to talk to you this week, and let's say you're in the middle of something, challenge yourself to really listen. Not listen like one year and typing and stuff like that, but to really listen. Not listen like while well, I'm going to the bathroom and you're on the phone, you hope somebody doesn't realize, but like really listen to somebody, to stop what you're doing and to look at them. Hear what they're saying. It's one of the greatest acts of love that we can do. And it's the same act that God did to us with the coming of His Holy Spirit. He listened from the inside. And the disciples are our proof of what happens when we're listening to from the inside. Listen to the genuine. And so, if we can be a community that really listens to each other, we would be a community that loves. We would be a community that loves each other. If we can stop and just listen to each other. Intently, attentively, and gently.